looking for a response today. Coach Mott is not hiding her feelings in regards to that game. She talked about her shooters having a little bit more confidence. And so we're hoping to see that she put some, some pressure situations on them in practice leading up to this game. And both teams turn it over on their opening possessions. Well, the Cavaliers, Lauren, like you mentioned, they've struggled from the three-point line recently. One player who tends to have a lot of success from the three-point line is Sam Brunel. She got injured in the second quarter against Wofford. Back in the lineup as she takes the three and misses. Early shot there for Brunel. Coach talked about just taking better shots and, and knowing when to take them. Early here on in the offense, they're trying to figure out what those shots look like and when the best time to take them against this Fordham defense. Emmy Hayford, eight in the maroon. The Pittsburgh transfer, some ACC experience for her. Shot clock is down to five. Rams have to hurry here. This is Donaldson hoisting up a three. There's a whistle first. Our officiating crew today of Tiara Cruz, Timothy Bryant, and Roy Jackson will gather here. And Tiara Cruz has signaled that there was an inadvertent whistle, so it's a jump ball. And since Virginia won the tap, it's Fordham's ball, but there's still only 1.3 on the shot clock. Hayford's pass deflected, and that runs out the remaining time on the shot clock. Great opportunity there for Virginia to get into that passing lane, knowing that it was going to be a quick shot. Paris Clark was able to get her fingertips on it and even avoid it from going out of bounds. Clark, the sophomore for the Cavaliers, transferred in from Arizona. She's from the Bronx, where Fordham is located in New York City. Cameron Taylor gets a post touch. Kicks it out to Clark. Speeds inside and scores the two. Great inside, outside game. Taylor saw that she didn't necessarily have the shot looking over her shoulder. It was a packed zone there, but Paris Clark did such a good job of not settling and getting into that paint. Starting lineup here for the Rams. All five players in this starting lineup are scoring career highs in points right now. Got Rose Nelson, a sophomore from Australia. Last season as a freshman, primarily came off the bench. Making her fifth start of the season tonight. Big post there, battling down low with Brunel. I believe she had three, two, two, too many seconds in there in the paint. Meanwhile, on this end of the floor, Fordham shows a little matchup zone. Coach Mott said she was concerned about that as Kamora Johnson, the star freshman, rattles down a tray. Nice for a team that's been struggling from deep. Specifically in Kamora, she's able to knock that one down early on. And you saw her just clap her hands, kind of like a sigh of relief as she's able to get that first one down. Extra possession here for the Rams. Virginia's bench. Seeking an offensive foul on Hafer, they don't get it. Matilda Flood puts her head down, too strong on the layup. Alexia Smith with the rebound, poked away from behind. Fordham does a good job of poking from behind. Coach talked about them knowing that they like to run fast. Virginia is a team that likes to get it out in transition, and great opportunity there to get it back and, and push for them. Well, this is a big sign for the Cavaliers getting some perimeter shooting. Got to get that in zone defenses, even if it's a matchup zone. The, the emphasis is in the paint. So Kamora being set for that shot is so important. You have to be expecting it, especially against the Fordham D, who, who's going to avoid you going downhill every time. Johnson has a lot of responsibility on her shoulders as a freshman point guard, especially as a distributor. That has not been the problem. Like you said, Lauren, getting that confidence on the shot. Hayford. Taya Davis, backup guard who just checked in. Hayford can't connect on the three. And another substitute for the Cavaliers, Jillian Brown is in. Passes down low, Clark the pump, and the score as Brown lost the headgear. Way to take their time down there on offense. They had the numbers, they just had to set it up. And Clark was able to finish.
Hayford to the perimeter for Donaldson. Barely grazes off the iron. And the rebound for Paris Clark. And a foul in the backcourt. It's on Hayford. Going down in transition. Smooth behind the back. And just taking her time there, letting her defender get up. And she's able to just have a sidestep dribble to finish on the other end. Clark locates the open shooter. Johnson again splashes down. The best way to stop your defense from playing a zone is to shoot them out of it. And Kamora Johnson right now, she's got her swag back. Coach talked about in practice the pressure drills that they put on them in regards to hitting three-pointers. Not just shooting them, but making them at a consistent rate. And so she was hoping to see that tonight, and so far, so good. I guess the pressure is working. Johnson came in with only 10 three-point makes on the season in the first 10 games. Has two in the first few minutes tonight. Clark whips it inside. Ooh. Taylor scores through the contact. Beast play right there. Paris Clark is doing such a good job of just making the good decision. In their game uh, against w Wofford, they were talking about just making smarter decisions, right? And she's eyeing the floor. She's seeing her cutter. And that's just a great finish, right? Like Taylor could have finished with her left hand and might have avoided the foul. But for her to be able to take that contact and go through it, is a huge thing for, for this Virginia squad early here in the first quarter. See, Lauren, that's interesting because I, I feel like a, a lot of youth coaches say if you're on the left side, finish with your left hand, but, but you're disagreeing with that in this instance? I mean, it just depends, right? Like, you know your defender is coming behind you. Might as well just go into, the, go into it. <laughs> Cavaliers blanking the Rams so far. ESPNW's number 24 recruit, Kamora Johnson, showcasing her outside shooting so far. Yeah, you get the ball in the middle of that zone, and you kick it to your shooters, or you do a simple skip pass to a wide open Kamora Johnson. What's interesting, though, is that she comes into this game just shooting 19% from long range. So for her to be able to be two for two right now is a huge confidence boost for the freshman. Look, the Cavaliers take a lot of three-pointers. They've struggled to make those three-pointers. And you go back to the last game against Wofford, just four of 23. But when they can open up their offense and take good three-point shots, this becomes one of the better offenses in the ACC. Yeah, you just can't let your lack of making these shots hurt the rest of your game, which is what we were able to see in their last game. Coach Mott said that teams are starting to realize that the percentages are down for the Cavaliers, and so teams are sagging off defensively. Cavaliers have exposed that so far here tonight against the Rams. Yeah, in situations like that, you got to make them pay, right? Nobody's in front of you. Make them pay. Here's some 2-3 from the Rams. Brown to Taylor, and she is tripped up. Two free throws for Cam Taylor. Yeah, Taylor was going in at two jerseys there two defenders that were looking to stop her but i mean taylor she just bulldozes through players these days taylor did not play in the opening half of the last game against wofford due to coach's decision ended with 13 against the terriers all in the second half and she's a very prolific free throw shooter as you get set to ring in the new year, Sunday the 31st, we'll have a women's basketball quadruple header on ACC Network that starts at noon Easter. Number 21 Florida State hosts Wake Forest, then number 14 Notre Dame squares off against Syracuse, followed by 19th ranked Louisville taking on Miami. And we cap the day with number three NC State here in Charlottesville to take on Virginia. Wishing everybody a happy new year, and you can soak it in with some women's college basketball. 14-0, the advantage for Virginia. Cavaliers force another turnover. Brown dips inside. Too much muscle on the layup. And a loose ball foul on Taylor. Taylor's got to be careful there first in the first quarter. But this Fordham offense still scoreless right now. We talked to Coach 
Mitchell before the game about what it is offensively that they need to just get into a little bit quicker. And she talked about their def or their, their transition, excuse me. She said they like to play up tempo and fast and be able to score in the first eight seconds. And when that doesn't happen, then they're getting into their secondaries. But it seems like their secondaries are being interrupted even by this aggressive defense by Virginia. And Coach Mitchell said, if we don't score in the first eight, we got to flow into our motion offense. This is another turnover for the Rams. Their sixth game, uh, six of the game. It's a palming violation. So Cam Taylor is on the bench now with two fouls and a touch foul here on the Rams. We've talked about Cam Taylor early on in these games, just holding off on some of those 50-50 balls, right? She goes all out for them and sometimes just winds up with one too many fouls. Brunel cans the tray. Brunel three, her first of the evening. Now this is a player who is confident beyond that three-point line. 40% three-point shooter so far this season. Pass skies over the head of Rose Nelson off the hands of Mandy McGurk. That is turnover number seven for Fordham. And if you're Virginia, you're excited about this defense, right? Coach talked about against Wofford, they were not clicking defensively. They were just missing assignments, and that turned into them not even being able to take good shots offensively. And so seeing them do uh, play two sides of this game is exactly what you want to see after an upsetting loss. Yeah, Coach Mox was pretty blunt of just how she felt with the game against Wofford back on Saturday and she said, look, when we don't follow the game plan, we're not going to win games. But when we follow the game plan, I think we're a pretty solid team. And, and she said, look, I'm not down on this team at all. Right? You're allowed to lose a game. Just didn't like the way that they lost. But she needs her team to lock in on the scout. So far, obviously, they've done that. Yeah, Corey, I think we talked about it even against Ryder, right? That the 10 day span where there are no games and you're just practicing. Hmm. I oftentimes remember those practices being the hardest, but also the game coming back being the one where it was like, did we did we practice for the past 10 days? Like, like what's going on? Um, and we actually we were able to see that against, uh, when they played Wofford. I mean, upsetting if you're a Virginia fan, um, but it's, it's crazy how that happens. <laughs> yeah, it's a sport of repetition. No doubt about that. Donaldson the floater. Fordham still without a basket. The Rams are now 0 for their first eight with seven turnovers. And Bridget Mitchell is seeking some answers. Yeah, this is a team usually shooting 41% from the field. Just not able to see it go through the net just yet. Here's an open look, and it's cashed in. It's McGurk. Yeah, I knew I, I knew I was gonna I was gonna talk him up. <laughs> I knew I was gonna talk him up. McGurk, so so busy. So nice to see her be able to get one through offensively right now. Yeah, McGurk has started some games. Comes off the bench tonight. Coach Mox for UVA told her team during the Cavaliers shoot around that if McGurk comes in the game, they're trying to set her up. London Clarkson, second consecutive game in the lineup, was out. A few games ago with concussion protocol. This goes back to the Rams. The pursuit of that ball when it's coming off the rim, you, you always see white jerseys heading for it. The Fordham player down on the ground while London tried to go for it, didn't come up with it just yet though. Cavaliers number three in the entire nation in offensive rebounds per game with 18 and a half, only trailing Sam Houston and Georgia Southern. Donaldson, and a travel. It's on Nelson. Turnover counter reaches eight. And normally, Lauren, this is a Fordham team that forces the opposition into a lot of turnovers. Opponents are averaging 20 turnovers per game against the Rams, but it's Fordham coughing it up early. Yeah, I think the Cavaliers are giving Fordham a dose of their own medicine here, just getting up defensively. Olivia McGee, an island of space. Nice knockdown. I tell you to get out of that zone, shoot them out of that zone. Olivia McGee is known for being able to knock down some timely three-pointers. And here they're just running it up. Well, the Cavaliers in their last game were four for 23 from three. They have four threes already. Nearly had five. McGee on the misfire. 
Flood all the way to the basket as the seas part for Flood. Yeah, no one stopped and made her change direction there in transition. White jerseys were back, but they didn't get two feet in front of her. Flood, one of the two Australians on the roster with Rose Nelson. Zone again from the Rams and a kickball on Donaldson. Just wide open there in the corner, and that's what happens when you're playing that match-up zone. There are so, only so many spaces on the court that you're, you can guard. And that corner is oftentimes the one that's wide open. Clarkson gets the layup to go. Yeah, it was very interesting. It was at shoot-around this afternoon, Lauren, and Olivia McGee was the first player out here shooting. Yeah, I mean, she's a transfer, right? She, she's getting into what this program likes to do offensively. And, and as a team that hasn't been shooting the ball very well, you, you have to get in those, those shots by yourself. It's repetition. Alexia Smith, the crossover, back to Brunel. No hesitation. Rebound McGurk. Mandy McGurk, who transfers from 10 to Donaldson underneath, comes from New Mexico State. My board sets the table. McGurk, the runner, off the window. Nice shot. Yeah, you can tell the, the pace is different for Fordham. I don't know if it was it was after after one of their last turnovers, but their pace has just picked up offensively. They're running off of screens even a little bit harder, and they're getting into that paint and, and just not relaxing offensively anymore. McGurk, two of her first two, and Clarkson is heading to the free throw line. And what a year Clarkson has been having for Virginia. She's come off the bench. She's had to start a few times. And no matter what her role has been, whether it's starting or coming off the bench, she always plays the same. She's always going to show you that she's hungry for the ball. She's going to pursue rebounds. She's going to go after those and one buckets like we saw last time down the court. Here's our Friday night men's basketball doubleheader that begins at 6 Eastern. P.J. Hall and number 18 Clemson hosts Queens University at Little John Coliseum. And Marcus Burton and Notre Dame take on the Marist Red Foxes in South Bend. Should be a good evening of hoops on ACC Network and the ESPN app. The Tigers at 9-1 lost their first game of the year at Memphis on Saturday. Notre Dame trying to get things going. Michael Shrewsbury his first year as the head coach. Donaldson on the fadeaway, misses everything, and a foul underneath. Good activity from Kayla Harris, the graduate student, number 34 in the maroon, who is playing in her first game since November the 16th. Wow, it's a long time to not play, not be on the court. But her activity so far has been good for the Rams. Getting on the boards, moving her feet laterally. Coach Mitchell said her addition to this program is a big boost. Transfers from Seton Hall, spent four years with the Pirates. Another steal. McGee zips ahead. And the deuce. Being present in those passing lanes, not letting the Rams get comfortable offensively. Even when they were able to knock down some shots, Virginia's defense, they're not trying to slow them down. They're trying to... Get in those passing lanes and get something down on the other end in transition. Harris forces it up, can't get it to go. Rebound Brunel. Smith from three quarters court, too short. While the Virginia Cavaliers had six different scores in the opening quarter, Fordham with only seven total points. Cameron Taylor, some early action before picking up a couple of fouls, and the outside shooting working so far. In the opening 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, finesse comes from how you practice. You can't, you know, just come out and especially in the ACC play and think you're going to finesse a defense, right? But they're doing that tonight and they're showing that from behind the backs to uh, passing, skip passes over, over zones even, that they're able to see and make those shots. They just have to do it consistently, like Coach Mock says. Certainly a precise first quarter for UVA. 9 of 14 from the floor and 4 of 8 from 3. McGurk on the bounce. Harris delivers it back to the perimeter. Good ball movement here from Fordham. McGurk can't cash in, and Caden Lawson skies for the rebound. 
great ball movement there. Now, Fordham is a team that's shooting 31% from deep. So if they're able to keep moving the ball, and Virginia answers, though, they said, we got it this time. The Cavaliers are five of nine from three. And the lead is up to 23 for UVA. Totally different team. I can only imagine after a loss that not only is coach upset, but as players, you're upset, right? She talked about Kamora Johnson even growing in her leadership during this period. Yeah, she said the entire team was hungry as the layup goes here for Harris. I, I was very interested, Lauren, when she said that, to, to talk about a freshman growing as a leader in such a short amount of time. It's the 6-3 I mean, here for UVA. They're, I mean, you, you talk, maybe someone said that they were bad shooters. I don't know. <laughs> did, did we miss something, Corey? <laughs> hey, motivation. Right? I, I wonder if they have an earpiece on the bench they're listening to us right now. Yeah, but in regards to leadership, right, Coach, my coach always talked about it. Um, coach Boyle, you know, there are two seasons here. Non-conference is a whole season of itself when you are a freshman, right? There, these are this new court, new new pace even, and when you get into ACC play, it's a whole different arena. So her leadership has to grow from non-conference to ACC, and that's a good sign if you're a Virginia fan. And Coach Mox, after today's shoot around, looked at her team and said, "This is the final non-conference game. Let's make sure we celebrate that." Caden Lawson joining in on the three-point celebration, and Bridgette Mitchell needs to stop the bleeding. Well, it's certainly feeling like a celebration in John Paul Jones Arena. Not one, not two, not three, but four Cavaliers knocking down threes. Not necessarily when they need it, but hey, might as well practice while they can before we get into ACC play. In the precision of healthcare, every detail matters. Cavaliers are lighting up the Christmas tree tonight with three pointers, seven of them so far. They are making Fordham pay every which way on the court in transition, coming down in one pass, and the three is going up. And I believe I most misspoke and said four players have a made three three point field goal, but it's actually five, mm. including Sam Bruno. And the Cavaliers, like you mentioned, Lauren, they're finding open shooters in transition. 15-0 in points off turnovers as well. And there's another giveaway from the Rams. 11 turnovers for Fordham. Johnson on a bounce. Taylor back in with the two fouls. Misses. And Nybor clears. And this is the opportunity for Fordham to get a shot in transition like they like. First eight seconds. It pays off for Donaldson. Yeah, getting back to the basics is sometimes what just needs to happen when you're in a game like this. There's a huge, huge distance in points here, and so just getting back to the basics is what Fordham should be looking to do right now. And Coach Bridgette Mitchell told us before the game, it's all about us. We're not necessarily concerned about what UVA does well, what they don't do well. This is about us building for A-10 play. Flood twisting, flood missing, and the rebound for Johnson. Caden Lawson unleashes the three, bottom. Caden Lawson's second three of the night, and she was a couple steps beyond that three-point line, so she's talking about some range tonight. The Cavaliers clearly did not get the memo that it's the first day of winter today. A hot shooter. <laughs> Where are you going there, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> Donaldson on the pullback, no. Smith, the turn. Donaldson falls down. Virginia scampers ahead. Oh, what a move, but not the finish. Jillian Brown couldn't get the two. It rolls out of bounds. It stays with UVA. Talking about a bit of finesse. I think Jillian might have finessed herself. She did that fake, but was still kind of leaning towards the corner for that kick and wasn't able to finish there in transition, but a great way for Alexia to get it out of her hands before the track came. I think that's the word of the night so far, finesse. I think we found it. Finesse. It's fitting, you no? Know? Yeah. Virginia, they had to get they had to get their game back. They had to get that confidence back. And what better way to display that with a little bit of finesse? I just feel like every movement is swift. It's calculated. They know what they're doing.
Amy Hayford in transition. The former Pitt Panther to Donaldson. Donaldson able to see it go through the net. I believe that's her third, third bucket of the night. Now Donaldson is a player who leads the A-10 in scoring. She's been slowed down tonight, but she's not going to stop searching for that shot. And a 35-point game earlier this year against St. Peter's, her career high back on November the 28th. 73-point shots on the season. She's made 25 coming in. Kamora Johnson, oh my goodness. She is four for four from three. Came into tonight with just 10 three-pointers made on her career. Perfect shooting from the floor tonight. I mean, as a freshman, before you go into ACC play, what more could you ask for? Your team is clicking on all cylinders offensively. Defensively, you're in the passing lanes. And she's able to knock down all her shots so far. Mm. She is showing why she was a McDonald's All-American. Katie Pauley is in, and the line drive three is through. No surprise. Everyone getting a piece of the pie, that three-point pie tonight. Katie Pauley is known for her three-point game. She's only averaging about 11 to 12 minutes per game, but when she comes in, she's searching for that three, and, and her teammates are searching for her as well. Everyone wants in on the three-point party tonight. Flood. You can hear Bridgette Mitchell from the bench screaming shooter. Everybody for the Cavaliers <laughs> is a shooter tonight. Taylor gets it stripped by McGurk. Great hands by McGurk. That's that defensive prowess that I was mentioning earlier. Three ball, Donaldson puts it in. Timeout, Coach Mox. Yeah, Fordham's gonna try to answer back here. Starting second quarter with Lauren Moses. I'm Corey Spector. Thanks so much for being with us on ACC Network Extra. Both teams have combined to make 24 shots tonight. 15 of them have been from the three point line. Seems like they're just testing each other, right? Both teams haven't been necessarily knocked down three point shooters, but they're, they're making it happen tonight. Katie Pauley off the bounce, turns it over, seeking Taylor. It's quite the way to ring in the inaugural World Basketball Day as we celebrate Dr. James Naismith introducing basketball to Springfield YMCA way back in 1891 on this date. Oh, yeah. First time that we're actually celebrating it, too. I'm having a fun time celebrating. I don't think he envisioned the three-point line as part of <laughs> basketball back then. Oh, no, and it's, it's totally changed the, the game in so many ways on every single level, right? We've got kids out here trying to shoot three-pointers, and now it's become a huge part of offenses. Running quick hitters for three-pointer three shooters, it, it's, it's amazing. Cam Taylor underneath with the deuce. See, I have a proposition for World Basketball Day. I think we need to go back to the peach baskets as the rims. On December 21st. <laughs> yes, just this day. Why not? Let's retrieve the ball from the peach basket. We'll do it that way. I tell you, transition would be no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> Kamora Johnson slows it down. Freshman point guard with 12 points to lead all scorers. Taylor swarmed at a steal. Fordham sprints ahead on a two-on-one. The bounce, Nelson gives it right back, and the layup is missed for Flood. Nice little give and go there in transition, but that was an interesting place for Fordham to try to trap Taylor there. I mean, she tried to put it on the floor, which resulted in a turnover, but that's just an interesting place to trap right there on the free throw line extended to create some pressure on their offense. Well, that's part of the flummoxing matchup zone that Coach Mox was talking about preparing for this Fordham D. Yeah, just different looks, and you have to be prepared at all times. You just never know when they're going to send two at you. Brunel gets a step on Nelson, falls down, wincing in pain. She's helped to her feet here by Matilda Flood. Brunel left the previous game against Wofford in the second quarter. She tells her teammates, I'm all right. Sam is a 
player who has battled through pretty much every injury you could battle through throughout her collegiate career. Oh yeah, she's a strong one. She, she fights through, she gets through her recovery. Looks like here she just stepped a little awkwardly and wasn't able to get the pass around the defender like she had hoped. So Brunel goes to the bench here. Nelson bodies up against Taylor. We have two minutes to go in our opening half. Ball poked free, out of bounds. Back to the Cavaliers and a 12th turnover for Fordham. As Sam Brunel, by the way, is walking back towards the dressing room. Seeing a little bit of frustration here from Donaldson, but it's so good to have a player like Amy Hafer, who has played in the ACC. Amy Hafer, I'm sorry, uh, in the ACC. She knows the speed, knows this game, and she's the one at the top of that defense getting her teammates together in regards to what defense they're playing and where they even may be looking for some trapping situations. Yeah, Hayford has played against Virginia on three different occasions during her time with the Panthers. She was with Bridget Mitchell when Coach B was an assistant with the Panthers from 2019 to 21 before taking off for Northeastern. Yeah. Flood blocks. Cameron Taylor with the denial. Said, not in my house. Let's get going on the other end. Pauly hacked. Great timing here. Great footwork to create that space and just meet it while it's in the air to avoid a foul. That's a beautiful block by Cameron Taylor. Um, not a Cavaliers team that necessarily blocks a lot of shots, but Cameron Taylor is the leader in that. ACC PM with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannenbaum. Weekdays from Mark's Charlotte studio in his basement at 4 Eastern. We'll continue talking college football and have the latest from around the conference right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Donaldson on a bounce down low. The open space and the layup for Nyborg. Nice pass there. Thought she was going to try to do a little stop and pop, but seeing her big girl down there paid off. Olivia McGee to her fellow freshman Johnson. Pauly, the sophomore, adjusts, whizzes her way into the paint and scores. Another finesse bucket, right? You see, you see a big body down there in the lane. You don't want to run into her. Just a simple step around for the layup. Okay, Katie. Pauly with six points off the bench so far tonight. Shot clock is off. And Virginia can hold for the final possession of what has been a masterful first half for the Cavaliers. Clarkson. Back to Johnson. Game clock at five. Johnson forces it up, misses. Offensive rebound. Taylor asserts herself, misses, and we're done with 20. Not able to finish it with a bucket, but it seemed like the lack of long range shots coming into this game brought this Virginia team together. They're playing more confidently offensively, and they're knocking down shots. Simple as that. They're seven or 10 of 17 from the three point line in the first half alone. Approaching the program record of 15 three-pointers Cavaliers had against Tulane earlier this season. Virginia X2 over Fordham, 50 to 25 in the opening 20 minutes. Here from John Paul Jones Arena. We cannot be great unless we are also good. Rams inch closer, make this competitive in the second half. I mean, no pressure, but Donaldson has to get going. She has to get scoring. This is how their team has been able to be successful and even have close games in this season so far. So when she gets going, this Rams squad will follow. By the way, a moment ago, you saw Sam Brunel walking away from the bench. She got tripped up late in the first half and came out of the game. So the Cavaliers are on offense here. London Clarkson is her replacement on this five to begin the second half. Clarkson on the kick for Clark into the paint, hangs and earns the whistle. Harris Again, Clark had seven in the first half. 
Yeah, talked about it a little bit earlier about Clarkson, just her, her responsibility of kind of going where she's told to go. I think Clark is another player who started this season on the bench with an injury and has been able to be thrown into this program in a way where it's like, hey, coach, where do you need me? So both players doing a great job of a give and go inside outside game. The ball goes in and she was able to get out of Clark's way so that she can get that drive and, and end up on the free throw line. Clark had 14 in the last game against Wofford on Saturday. As we touched on earlier, she's from the Bronx, of course, where Fordham University resides. But she said, eh, this game doesn't hold any more weight to me. Didn't necessarily grow up a Fordham fan. Matilda Flood sneaks into the paint, and she got the whistle, too. I mean, of course you say that when you're going up against them, right? I mean, she she had to know, know a little bit about Fordham, but like we talked about, Clark is a player who committed to Arizona and comes to UVA from Arizona and is finding her way in this Mox offense here. And so far, so good. We've got a Friday night men's basketball doubleheader that begins at 6 Eastern time. Clemson, the number 18 Tigers, led by P.J. Hall. They host Queens at Little John Coliseum. Marcus Byrne in Notre Dame, the Irish against the Marist Red Foxes in South Bend. Should be a nice evening of hoops on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Fordham used a lot of matchup zone in the first half. Clark alone for the jumper, swirls off, stick back, Taylor, yes. That's where she is great, that weak side rebound, just getting it up and over her defense, and Fordham's not going away from this matchup zone, and Virginia's doing a good job of just sealing that defender on the other side to get a shot. She just gets up, man. There's no box out either, no point of contact there to avoid her from getting that rebound. Lauren, the unthinkable happened for the Cavaliers in the first half. They scored 50 points, and their best player, Cam Taylor, only had six. <laughs> I mean, would you, think, would you look at that? When you're knocking down threes, your post player is able to get a little bit of a break. And how about all the attention she attracted there in transition? It led to an open two. Oh, yeah. I you know your scout. You know that. Taylor is getting to that block, and if you don't match up with her, they're going to pass it to her. Aggressive hedge on the screen, a deflection into the backcourt. Tiara Cruz said it went off a Cavalier, so the Rams were allowed to go into the backcourt. McGurk just jacks one up, misses short, rebound ping-pongs around. Rams have it, Donaldson's three, off the window. Virginia now in transition, four on three. Smith the hesitation, the handoff for Clark, whips it back to Smith, the reset for Johnson. Fluid, right? Yeah, thought they were gonna lay it up there. But here comes the pressure for Fordham. And Taylor overcooks the pass for Clarkson. Yeah, one of the diff one of the different looks from Fordham so far in this second half is just the where they are starting their zone. They're putting two guards out beyond the three-point line to really get into those passing lanes and try to break up some of the passes, the skip passes that was working so well for Virginia in the first half. McGurk flips it. Nyborg shot, rattles out, rebound Taylor. When you're playing a zone like Fordham is, I'd imagine that takes an incredible amount of communication. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have shooters, you have inside, you have to make sure that, and Virginia's setting screens on this zone. So that's another layer because not only are you trying to protect your zone, you're also guarding someone in a matchup. Ooh, nice shot. London Clarkson through the washing machine. Yeah, she looked a little off balance there, but was able to get her eyes on the basket and put it through. Flood is bumped, and it's on Paris Clark. Fading to the right. Not a fade away, but she was fading in the air there, but was able to get it down. You know, we're noting the play of London Clarkson but I think it's her leadership, too, for this team. As a graduate student, Coach Mox said after the game against Wofford, the 71-70 loss on Saturday, that this needs to be a player-driven team. Mm. And Clarkson, as one of those veterans, certainly provides that leadership. 
Yeah, she's always been that for them. She's always brought the energy, every and one, every charge. She's usually a part of it. And that's been a huge part of her game. On top of just being efficient, I mean, she's sh shooting 51% from the field, one of the best free throw shooters on the team. And so not only is she talking it, but she's walking it too. Tamara Johnson peers at the open court, stops on a dime, and the free throw line, Jay, is money. Too easy for Tamara. That's her sweet spot right there. When she's able to just take a few dribbles in this instance, it was in transition, but right there around that free throw line, she's able to knock it down. 16-point edge and fast break points for the Cavaliers. Loose ball, McGurk tracks it down, discards it here for Taya Davis. Nelson. Stuck by Taylor, turnover Rams. Clark gallops ahead, steps through McGurk and lays it in. Beautiful little step through finish on the other side of the basket. She's so poised in transition. Clark now with 13, Kamora Johnson with 14, three shy of her career high. Good news for the Cavaliers, by the way. Sam Brunel is at the scorer's table, waiting to check in. Donaldson, too much might. Stays with the Rams. Another improvement I see from Virginia, even on the defensive end, we, we've talked about where they've improved offensively as Brunel joins her team and her squad on the court after getting shaken up a little bit in that first half. But defensively, they're just guarding that, that ball screen a lot better, too. They're getting their hands in it. The, the post that's defending the screen is being a help for their guard. It's a lot more seamless in this game. Johnson leaks out, and Johnson puts it down. It's a 12-0 burst right now for the Cavaliers. And Bridget Mitchell, through the first three quarters of this game, has called a timeout in each of them. Yeah. Got her. Get her team back going. But Virginia, they are still hot in transition, able to just boop. Too easy for Kamora Johnson. On Monday, she was honored at halftime during William Monroe High School's game, the girls' varsity game against Orange County, where Sam played her All-American jersey and her Team USA jersey now hanging on the walls at her high school. Pretty cool. Yeah, she already had a spot for that Gatorade Player of the Year, but now it is joined by two of her jerseys, as you just said, and her high school coach talked about Sam's hard work and her perseverance and even her humility that we've been able to see throughout her career as well. I didn't purchase any great holiday themed sweater. I, I didn't get the memo, my, my bad. Hey, you just gotta recycle one that you have in your closet. That, that's what I do. Mm. And it just happens to be a, a wrapped present. So I figure that I'm the present for Christmas, no? Oh. Yeah. Well, we are so delighted that you've graced <laughs> us with your presence today on our broadcast led by producer Sean Fulton. Here's the three that's banked in for Taya Davis. Been having a cold night tonight, but able to see her first shot being a three go through the net as Fordham is putting some pressure here in the court. And they force a turnover. Cavaliers give it away for the ninth time. Again, Fordham comes in averaging 20 turnovers forced per game. Hayford dips and couldn't get the scoop shot to go. Here's Jillian Brown motoring ahead. The Grand Rapids native to the outside, Lawson. Left it short, rebound Davis. Lawson was lining that one up, but this Fordham squad, they, they play a unique four out, one in. Not oftentimes giving them a lot of opportunities to offensive rebound, which we've seen in this game. Well, it does create some driving lanes and the kick out for Donaldson. Yep, that's certainly the point of it. Coach Mitchell talked about that, right? There, there are opportunities to get two feet in the paint bring some eyes to that direction and then be able to knock down the three-pointers. Kick out three, Davis rims out, and an offensive rebound. 
Nyborg puts it up and heads to the free throw line. Not a great defensive possession there if you're Virginia. All game long, they've been doing a really good job on the boards. I mean, they have 23 defensive rebounds. But that time down, it looks like Lawson, she's checking out. She just didn't match up with anyone down there. Well, Coach Mox certainly was not pleased with those back-to-back -back turnovers at midcourt, so that's why we effectively get some wholesale changes here. Nyborg, the senior from Bethel, Connecticut, Fairfield County. One of just four returners on this roster for Coach Bridgette Mitchell. Eight newcomers, two freshmen, six via the transfer portal. And another giveaway for the Cavaliers. So the full court pressure working for the Fordham Rams. McGurk's jumper. And Clark has it, and Clark is tripped up. Yeah, that pressure is working for them right now in the third quarter. Just trying to slow Virginia down offensively, as we've seen in some of the highlight packages. Virginia is able to get some nice shots in the paint and at the three-point line just by running in transition. So that's a great call there from Coach Mitchell to be able to slow down Virginia's offense and get some steals while they're at it. Yeah, it's those mini battles and another mini win so far for the Rams in this third quarter. Virginia has not made a three since halftime. Taylor, though, has a two. And I think he said it before the game when all us fails get it into number 20's hands. I think so. A logical idea. <laughs> Taylor with eight points, three of six from the floor. Kamora Johnson, the game high, 16 points, one shy of her career high. Just a monster first half for Kamora Johnson. Opportunity to allow the big girl in the paint to rest a little bit, even though her presence is so, so noteworthy for this Virginia squad. Yeah, at times it's felt like Taylor's been a decoy but it's paid off for the Cavaliers. UVA, another turnover, 12th of the day. Two on one, Donaldson the distribution, Davis the hesitation, and there's Taylor swallowing up the ball. Uh, this is not a mosaic of basketball right now, and Coach Mock says enough of that. I will take a timeout, very pleased. Virginia getting a little sloppy here in the third. <laughs> and that showcased just how much she wanted to be a ramp. Yeah, she says she's a city girl. She's enjoying her time at Fordham in this program. She's just excited about, you know, all these players feel like they have something to prove, right? They, a lot of them are transfers, utilizing that transfer portal, and they have a chip on their shoulder, right? They came in and wasn't getting a lot of time at their previous schools, and now she's giving them not only time, but also putting them in places for them to be productive. Yeah, we touched on that off the top. All five starters for the Rams, averaging career highs in points. One of those players, Donaldson, their top scorer, 19 and a half points per game, misses that one. She has 12 tonight. Johnson, six of seven from the floor tonight. Clarkson to Smith. Taylor. When all else fails, you put the ball in her hands. Per the words of Lauren Moses, can't get that one to go. Game clock, shot clock differential of three as Davis, the junior, transferred in from Garden City Community College in Kansas, resets. Flood travels, took an extra step before pounding the ball down. Moving a little too quick down there in the paint. The flood so far it has six points on the night, one being a three. Johnson uses the width of the court, but Clark's pass is off the mark. Five seconds remain in the quarter. Donaldson crossing over, heaving up a shot off the window. And the ball goes out of bounds as time expires. In quarter number three, Virginia still leads by a whole bunch over Fordham. Great. Heading over to Fordham. And one of the things that Coach Mitchell talked about in regards to Coach Mox was just happy to see, um, you know, 
another black woman winning in sports, right? We have so many um, head coaches right now who are representing. Um, and she's like, you know, idols are becoming rivals right now for Coach Mitchell going up against Coach Mox. And she's just excited to compete against her. Yeah, and it's not like these two coaches have the, the closest relationship. and But they've noticed each other from afar. And Bridgette Mitchell certainly holds Coach Mox in a high regard. Yeah. You know, from from going to like where you were able to be, we were able to count on one hand the amount of, of women of color leading programs to being able to look across the sideline now. Um, it's a beautiful thing. And I mean, I think that's why it's so important to not only come here and show your respect, but come here and compete as well, which Fordham hasn't been able to do at a consistent rate. But seeing the way that they're able to respond even in this game to what it is that Virginia has been succeeding at is a plus. Well, Coach Mitchell, as we noted, has some experience throughout some programs, and one of those programs was right across the mountain at James Madison under Sean O'Regan from 2016 to 2019. Gained some valuable experience there. Dukes, of course, the reigning Sun Belt champions after moving to that conference, and I know Coach O'Regan relied heavily upon Coach Mitchell. She was a big part of James Madison recruiting Kiki Jefferson, who of course is now at Louisville and quickly becoming one of the best players in the ACC. Yeah, we talked about her time at Pitt as well. I think the, the amount of leagues that she just has experience in it, experience, and I think that's a weapon in itself, right? Being able to understand what these teams in different leagues like to do to be able to take that out to the A-10 and, and do something special with this Fordham team, only in her first season. Yeah, and the A-10 is a very difficult conference. You, know, you go through the last 10, 15, 20 years, the A-10 has produced multiple teams consistently in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, extremely consistent league out there. It's a battle every single time when it gets to tournament time. Miranda Nyborg checks in for Fordham. The Cavaliers also make a couple of changes. Olivia McGee in the game. Katie Pauley in as well. Or the Cavaliers had eight third quarter turnovers. Coach Mox didn't seem very pleased with some of those giveaways as Bridgette Mitchell injected that full court press. Yeah, they did such a good job of taking care of the ball in the first half. But like you said, it was that pressure that made them just question themselves just a little bit. They were a little hesitant or they were moving too quick and just throwing the ball all over the place, warranting those eight turnovers in just one quarter. Virginia scored 50 points in the first half, only had 16 in the third. Davis opts to reset. Donaldson, timer at four. Donaldson swings it out, flood wide open, no. And the weak side rebound for Kamora Johnson. 16 points, five assists, four rebounds, pull up Jay, no dice. Offensive rebound, fellow freshman McGee, no. Great follow up there, but wasn't able to get it in the right spot on that backboard to see it go to the net. Nyborg to Davis. And she cans the three. Lines up her second three of the night. Davis had a slow start in this game, but just as a point guard of this team, you know, she was trying to balance whether to go for her shot, get other people involved, stick to the game plan. And I think she did a good job of trying to play within the game plan as much as possible. And now just settling for that wide open three pointer. Coach Mitchell said when she came in via the transfer portal, they loved her up tempo style of play. And Coach Mitchell loves to have her players shoot the ball in the first eight seconds, if not working into the motion offense. You just saw there. Johnson wraps around the screen. Johnson bolts too strong on the layup. Nyborg secures. Donaldson. Offensive rebound. Nyborg, a collision with Flood. McGurk, yes. Virginia going up against a squad that has more offensive rebounds than them, and that's first. Granted, Virginia is shooting the ball a lot better than they have in previous games. They are 49% from the floor. Yeah, this would represent a season high for the Cavaliers. 46% at LaSalle in the 94-73 win earlier in December. That is the best field goal percentage as Pauly shuffles the feet. Well, the Cavaliers were palms away from the three-point line in the first half, but 
Nothing here in the second half. Fordham Rams are just able to adapt, right? They put that pressure on them, so there wasn't really many opportunities for Virginia to even look for the threes. Slowing them down and, and getting them out of their rhythm, it worked out well. Cavaliers came in last in the ACC in three-point percentage, a back cut and a wide open layup. McGurk. Good read there, knowing that Virginia has been in the passing lanes all night long. They able to hit a backdoor cut. You know, Lauren, don't let this go under the radar here. Fordham has scored the first 10 points of the fourth quarter. Virginia has yet to score in this frame. Lawson tripped herself up. It's now in the hands of Clark. Has to do some freelancing. Stays with the Cavs. Cavaliers are being more stagnant in their offense than we've seen. Coach Mox talked about it before this game that when they go up against this matchup zone, they have to be moving constantly. So to, we should be expecting them to cut hard and, and screen hard and just be moving, everyone moving at the same time. And, and we got, they got a little slowed down there in that possession. This is an offensive foul. It's another turnover. Cavaliers 0 for their first eight in the fourth quarter. You know, the best way for them to erase this quarter and a half <laughs> out of Coach Mox's mind heading into the locker room at the end of this game is to play lockdown defense and to take better shots, be smarter with the ball. Because the first half was, was great for them. Nyborg gets the ball, but it's a travel instead on Hayford. Fordham putting up a good fight here in the fourth quarter. 10-0 edge. Right after the practice ends. Seven different individuals made a half-court shot, including manager Katie Driver. The whole team went bananas. And then Brendan Shea, another manager, kerplunk. <laughs> well, I mean, seven is the number of completions, so, so it made sense. But look at Sam Brunel. She, her mind was blown. All players were going crazy for their support staff. Seven different people made a half-court shot. And it's not like they each took, like, three, four, five. You only get one shot at it, and seven different people put it through the rim. Oh, the bank shot. It is open here in Charlottesville, apparently. It is. It's a little late, but I'm sure we can squeeze you in. Don't the accountants get off for the holiday? <laughs> Harris Clark with the two. So the Cavaliers finding the scoreboard here. They did not have any points in the first half of this fourth quarter. Both squads come out of that timeout. Three from three from their last showing on the court and Virginia had gone quite some time in this fourth quarter without a made bucket and now they're answering Fordham's aggressiveness and that aggressiveness forces Cam Taylor to the bench with four fouls that might do it for her tonight if that is it Taylor with 10 points eight rebounds two assists it's always nice to have that stat line and in the back of your mind you're thinking eh, kind of a quiet night for her <laughs> Quiet indeed, but again, her presence is so prominent for this team. Causing a lot of eyes and a lot of attention down in the paint, opening up those shots early on in the first half for her guards to knock them down. Maura Johnson with a career high 20 points tonight. Harris Clark has 15, approaching her career high of 19. Cavaliers scored 50 points in the first 20 minutes tonight. Two-man game with Johnson and Clarkson. Kamora, the step back three. Why not? Step back behind the back three. I mean, she's just so confident right now. That three-point shot is nothing for her tonight. 23 for Johnson. And now a block. She's a point guard. The shred and the pass ahead. It's a laser beam to Smith. Defense turning into offense. The guard-to-guard -guard connection there. 
between Alexia Smith and Kamora Johnson. Those two we see a lot of times interchangeable at that top of the paint. Although there is a response from Fordham. Yeah, they're interchangeable. And they're both about the same height. Johnson at 5'7", Smith at 5'8", but Smith plays taller than her height. A really good rebounder at five per game. Johnson, who attended games at John Paul Jones Arena since the fourth grade. She was once a ball girl, enjoying her time as a collegiate athlete with the Caps. Another look here. I mean, behind the back, too easy. And her eyes are up the entire time, as if she was going to change direction and go to the basket. But no, she was looking right at that rim for her wide open shot. Hand down, man down. Hmm. A lot of answers on the opposite end. But, but that really is the story of this game, right? Bridget Mitchell and Fordham comes in. They, they see what Wofford did. They allowed Virginia to take the three point shot. Cavaliers didn't make those shots. And simply put, Cavaliers made those three point shots tonight. Yeah, make them pay, you know? You, you know, just as everyone else is looking at the scout, right? That Just like Virginia knew what it was that Fordham was gonna look to do, they also knew that Fordham was gonna expect them not to make as many threes, right? And so now you make them pay and you make them change up their defense maybe earlier in the game than they would have liked. Clarkson, the step through and the layup. What did you like tonight about Fordham when they showed their moments? I mean, it was their pace. Offensively, when they were able to make buckets, they were going downhill. Their pace, of which they were even setting away screens, just looked different, right? I think you talk about players who stepped up for them all the time in Donaldson and, and, and Nelson and um, Nyborg, and those are players you expect to score here and there. But when those players aren't scoring, everyone has to get involved. And I think at times tonight, we were able to see that, but it just wasn't at a consistent rate. And on the opposite end for the Cavaliers, this is a program that a season ago, first year under Coach Mock, started 12-0, and ends up going 4-14 and in the ACC, a lot of injuries, things going on. This year, 8-3 and start, non-conference play, assuming Virginia closes out the final 64 seconds here. For the Cavaliers to take another step, improvement in the ACC, what do they need to continue to work on? Consistency. Coach Mox talks about it all the time, and it's so true, right? We see games like in the first half of this game where they are clicking on all cylinders, not just knocking down threes, but defensively they're getting in passing lanes and making the offense uncomfortable run their sets. When they are consistent on defense, when they're consistent with taking care of the ball, their game looks completely different. And so as they find that confidence and find that rhythm, I mean, this is a team who also didn't have healthy players in the first few games of the season. So this is a team that's trying to get everything clicking at the same time while Kamora Johnson knocks down another one. Six, Six of seven. seven. Jinx. <laughs> She has 26 points, a new Ooh. career high. 18 seconds to go. Floater misses for McGurk. And that should do it tonight from John Paul Jones Arena. Well, Coach Mox, after the loss against Wofford, she called it sickening. Today's game, a lot more enjoyable. Virginia rides the momentum of 10 first half three pointers. And the Cavaliers roll over the Rams, 82 to 56 to close out non-conference play. Boy, I tell you, the Cavaliers were able to right their wrongs. Kamora Johnson was able to get her mojo back just in time for the ACC play. I believe this game alone will change how defense